Thanks, James. Hey, this has been a beautiful service. Amen? God, I love seeing the children. I love parent-child dedications. I've done a bunch through the years, and man, it was hard to watch these guys lead it, but you don't need three clergy running over everyone. But special service, and, and thank you to the guests who are here um, this morning. It's awesome. So I just want to warn you, I have at least 30 minutes of good parenting material, right? I can't give it to you this morning. So I remember years ago as a young parent with young children in church, I was in a couple services where the preacher went on and on and on. And it was really hard. And I, I realized at that point, I, I made a decision for myself that if I was ever going to be a minister in that situation, I wanted to be sensitive to kids and to parents. Because, you know, the spirit doesn't always lead to go long in a service for preaching. Wow. I want to say that again. This is your chance to say Amen. The Spirit doesn't always lead the preacher to go long in a service. Amen. <laughs> wow, that's too loud, Clayton. That's a little too loud. Sometimes we have to, to, to just rein it in, pull it back, and, and recognize God's Spirit is moving in this service. The Word has gone forth. Now, I want to share a couple of things, and, and I will review some of this, this parenting uh, prep that I have for next week because it was just going to be a part two anyway and I think it's really relevant and preaching on parenting I believe isn't just for present parents just like this whole study on family themes whether we're talking about marriage or parenting or or whatever it can relate to us all in different ways in different contexts I think that's important last week we talked about the issue of favoritism that's not just an issue in families that needs to be paid attention to. It's an issue in society, in our communities, and especially this week. Amen? And the week before that, Clayton preached on lying and cheating, and, and we use a dysfunctional family in the scriptures to talk about that. But that's not just a family issue. And prior to that, we did a, in this family theme series, we talked about the importance of of unresolved anger and paying attention to it. That's not just a family issue. That's a societal, a community, and a broader um, issue as well. So the first slide I have this morning, and I shared it's from Ephesians 6, 10. You see the passage there. And I thought originally it would have been fun, and if I would have been a little more clever, I would have superimposed my face, right? Or, or better yet, Clayton's face right there on that. No, okay, that ain't gonna work. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power. This phrase helped me a lot this week. And I find myself continuing to repeat that when I face stuff, when I face unknowns, difficulties, I hear the Spirit say, Jess, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord, Jess. Church, you can be strong emotionally, mentally, spiritually with the Lord. You can be strong in the Lord. Parents, you can and you need to be strong in the Lord. Friends, church, we need to be strong in the Lord. So it's interesting, as I said the scripture for me, and, and unforgiveness or struggle would come, I found myself saying it, and it's as the word of God is living word works through my being to help me be a healthier person. I invite that for you to be strong in the Lord this week, this month. 
And maybe it's not this verse that helps you face or to flush out the stuff that gets stuck in your being. But maybe it's some other verses. I encourage you to pay attention for what that is for you. I like in the message, Peterson writes, and and this is his take on Ephesians 6.10. God is strong and God wants you strong. I love that. God is strong even when there's noise and the society is a struggle and we're wrestling with COVID and we're trying to figure out what we can and can't do. God is still strong. God is still creative. God still speaks to us and God wants us to be strong. Amen? Continuing in that Ephesians 6 text, in the Peterson version, be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. Take all the help you can get, every weapon God has issued, so that when it's all over but the shouting, you'll still be on your feet. Truth, righteousness, peace, Faith and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. God's word is an indispensable weapon. You'll need these words throughout your life. And prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare as well. Friends, family, parents. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Keep your eyes open. Keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. Amen? Church, be strong in the Lord and the strength of God's power. In conclusion... I want to reread the Galatians 5 passage that James read. And as you you hear me read the fruit of the Spirit, which fruit do you want more of in you, in your family, in the world? Pay attention to that. And be strong in working towards having the Spirit fruit or fruits in your life and around you. So Paul's writing to the church in Galatia. I think he's writing to us too. The fruit of the Spirit, capital S. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. And we need the Holy Spirit to help us with our lives. Amen? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. Or restraint. If we live by the Spirit, let us be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. That follows the fruit of the Spirit. Isn't that interesting? If we want the fruit of the Spirit, in our lives, in our homes. We have to pay attention to not becoming conceited, a know-it-all. We know everything for everyone. Or not competing so much against each other. I'm not talking just about natural competition. 
I'm talking about always, always coming up. I got to better that one. I always have to be right. I always have to be on top. And you know, that happens in families, right? Still happens in some of your families. Even happens in families where old people are. You'd think they would have worked that out already, right? Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. Let's pay attention to ourselves and what would draw us away from being people who live with spirit fruit in our lives. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you lead us in a variety of ways. Thank you for being here in this service and speaking strong words and being here embodied in people. Thank you. Embodied in children. Thank you. Help us be individuals, be families, be a church, be a body of Christ that bears fruit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Help us, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen.